It was to be prove a deeply disappointing start to the new season for Cardiff Blues as they went down to a 2010 defeat at home to unfancied Edinburgh. Rugby correspondent Simon Thomas surveys what went wrong for Danny Wilson's men in the PRO 14 opener at the Arms Park and what areas they particularly need to improve on. Bossed at the breakdown it's not impossible to be beaten at the breakdown and yet win the match, but it doesn't happen very often. In the modern game, it is the single most important area, with just about everything else impacted by it. Opposing open sides John Hardy and Josh Navidi contest for the ball The stark reality is the Blues came badly second best in that department against Edinburgh. And, guess what, they lost the match. Head coach Danny Wilson was quick to acknowledge the failings when he spoke to the media afterwards. We struggled at the contact area the whole game and that was the big difference between the teams, he said. They did a job on us there. The way we want to play is reliant on getting quick ball and we couldn't get enough of it to create gaps and opportunities. It all starts with the contact area and speed of ball. If the opposition can slow you down enough, they can fill the field and come with line speed to stop us playing the style of rugby we have become accustomed to playing here. The breakdown in particular was an issue. If we ended up on the floor, they seem to be over the ball very quickly in comparison to us, where our first player to the breakdown WASNT winning races and so was already at a disadvantage arriving to clean out. The first thing you have got to do is have the zest to win races to get over the ball and I don't know how many penalties we gave away at the contact area for holding on where we ended up isolated. That's not us, that's not normally a problem, so it's something we've got to put right quickly. Skipper for the night Matthew Reese has been in the sport long enough to know it's about mentality as much as physicality at the breakdown and he was typically honest in his assessment. Cardiff Blues skipper Matthew Reese pictured during last night's defeat the contact area is a massive part of the game and we came second best there, which was credit to Edinburgh, but poor on our behalf, said the veteran hooker. It's probably a bit of a mindset. It's down to the individual, going out on the field and making sure you have got that hunger for the contact area. Edinburgh targeted that area, assuming if they could do a job there they could take our game away from us, and they surely did that. As players, we have got to hold our hands up and take the brunt of it, which will come on Monday. Hurry back Sam when it comes to the breakdown, the most important man of all is the jackal, the player who gets over the ball to secure it in attack and slow it down in defence, winning the penalties and the crucial turnovers. Cardiff Blues have three outstanding exponents of that art form in the shape of Sam Warburton, Ellis Jenkins and Gethin Jenkins, but all three are absent at the moment. Open side Jenkins will undergo surgery this weekend having torn his hamstring in the final pre-season friendly against Exeter and will be out for up to three months, which is an absolute body blow. Prop Gethin Jenkins, who is like another back rower over the ball, is still recovering from a knee operation, while flanker Warburton will make a delayed start to the campaign following a post-Leans break. Sam Warburton has had a post-Leans break from the game image PA all of which left Josh Navidi having to wear number 7 against Edinburgh. Now the versatile Navidi is a superbly consistent performer and, in fact, he was one of the few players to show up well for the Blues, putting in a typically strong display and scoring their only try. But he has played a lot of his rugby at number 8 over the last year or so, including on Wales' summer tour of the South Seas, and his game is more about physicality with ball in hand and in defence, rather than jackling. He actually reverted to number 8 just before half-time following Nick Williams' departure, which meant Josh Turnbull moving to the open side. So there was no specialist 7 out there for the hosts as the game slipped away from them after the break. It's going to be a continuing issue over the coming weeks and Warburton's return to action can't come soon enough. He doesn't start his pre-season until Monday and the plan is for him to sit out most of the opening month of the campaign. It remains to be seen whether his return might be fast-tracked a little now, given the state of affairs. Matthew Morgan is tackled by Edinburgh Centre Junior Rassia, his predecessor as Wales captain, Matthew Rees, is certainly hoping to see him back in action soon. We probably missed an out-and-out out seven, which might have made things a bit different. We might have had a few turnovers ourselves, he said, reflecting further on the defeat to Edinburgh. It's a massive blow with Ellis having a freak injury last week. Obviously he is going to be sidelined for a few months now. It goes to show you need an out-and-out out seven on the field at any given time just to help you in the contact area. Hopefully Sam will be back sooner rather than later the HIA Hawkeye you've had Hawkeye in tennis, cricket and football, now it's arrived in rugby. 
The technology has been introduced into the Guinness PRO 14 for the new season in a bid to limit the number of head injuries and concussions. It involves an independent assessor following the game on a laptop and looking out for any collisions or signs of players being in difficulty. It came into play on the opening night of the campaign, resulting in Blues No. 8 Nick Williams leaving the field just before halftime during the Arms Park encounter with Edinburgh. Nick Williams had to leave the field after being spotted by Hawkeye that was to be the end of Williams' match, with the Kiwi not returning following his head injury assessment. Explaining the chain of events, Blues coach Danny Wilson said the Hawkeye system identified that head had a bump. There are cameras on the game that will pick up if anyone has symptoms that look like they should be coming off. It's pretty watertight now in terms of how decisions are made. It's not a case of going through the protocol anymore. They are independent, which is great for the safety of the game. Nick being Nick he wanted to go back out there, but he was overruled on that. No penetration you hear a lot of talk about the red zone in rugby and the need to come away with points when you get there. It essentially means the opposition 22. Now the Blues spent a fair chunk of time there on Friday night, but were only able to come away with one converted try and one penalty. It's simply WASNT a good enough return. Time and again, they went through successive phases deep in enemy territory, but without really getting anywhere. All too often, they ended up going across the field rather than forward, with attacks ultimately petering out due to a spilled ball or an isolated player being penalised. Much of the problem was the slow ball we have already talked about and that was exacerbated by the fact there was no one to turn that bad ball into good by smashing over the gain line and providing some momentum. New lock Damian Welch tries to make ground but is snared by Edinburgh duo Junior Rassia and Magnus Bradbury. Nick Williams is usually the go-to man there, but he WASNT at his fully revved up best on his first outing after injury, an outing that was cut short before the break. It all meant there was just no penetration and no cutting edge, with Alex Cuthbert being pretty much the only player to carry with real purpose and intent. In contrast, Richard Cockrell's Edinburgh capitalised on the limited opportunities, claiming tries in either half through Blair Kinghorn and Christine to seal the spoils. And now for Dublin. It doesn't get any easier for the Blues, with a testing trip to Leinster coming up next Friday. There needs to be a big, big improvement, as coach and captain acknowledge. It was a frustrating night, admitted Wilson. We are not going to hide away from it. It's not the standard we would expect. There was a 10-15 minute patch in the second half when we couldn't do anything right. There were a comedy of errors that happened for that little period. It's not a performance we are pleased with and it's obviously not a great start. We will lick our wounds and try and put things right going into another tough challenge next week. Hooker Reese added it's a hard one to take. It was a very disappointed changing room. Disappointing it was indeed.